Every time the Sephora sale comes around, we just get inundated with sale content and it can be really overwhelming to wade through all the recommendations. But you guys voted on my community tab and you wanted to see my top picks. So I've narrowed it down to the 20 best products at Sephora in all categories, regardless of what's new. And a tried and true favorite that's been in every annual skincare favorites video on my channel and every Sephora recommendations video is the Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair Serum and Cream Treatment. I found this through my friend, Devin Jessmer. I'll link her Instagram below. This is my desert island product. If I could only have one product for the rest of my life, it would be this. I have dehydrated, sensitive, and acne prone skin, and this is just a dream. And I like to purchase it during the sale because it is 92 freaking dollars. Although I do want to mention, I believe Tatcha does their own 20% off sale, so make sure that you check all of the brands directly to see if you can get better discounts there. Either way, it's the kind of product that I only purchase when I can get it at a discount because it is so expensive, but to me, it is worth every single penny and more. It has the most unique texture I've ever tried in a skincare product. It feels like like a rich moisturizer, a hydrating, soothing serum, an oil, and an occlusive balm all in one. And it functions like that for me too. This has done wonders for my life partner, John, who has pretty bad eczema. And when my skin is super reactive and even water stings, this is one of the only products that really soothes everything and calms my skin right down. It's like a drink of water for your face. It just has this velvety, rich, luxurious texture and you really do feel like you're applying something special. Now. Anytime I talk about this product, I get a lot of questions about how I use it. People are like, I don't understand. Is it a serum? Is it a moisturizer? Is it a balm? And the short answer is it's kind of everything at once. So for me, I use it in a ton of different ways. For example, sometimes if I just need a little bit of soothing and like a little bit of an extra occlusive layer, I'll pop it on top of my moisturizer at night. If my skin is super reactive and everything is stinging my face, I'll go in with my Saatchi Pro Resilient Serum and then the Tatcha Serum and Cream Treatment. And that's it. And those are my two hero products for calming inflamed skin. In. And other times if I feel like my skin just really needs more hydration and I'm honestly sometimes just craving the, the experience of using this product, I'll use it instead of a moisturizer. I don't use it during the daytime because it is quite like luxuriously oily feeling on the skin. So it's not the kind of product that my combination skin could ever wear under makeup. But at night it is my holy grail. I have to have gone through at least six jars of this. It's the one product that I justify purchasing backups of. It's my number one pick and I just, I can't get enough of it. Another product I have really purchased countless jars of is the Pharmacy Honey Halo Ultra Hydrating Ceramide Moisturizer. This comes in a mini, a regular, and a jumbo size. And the jumbo size is $80, so I only buy it when there's a discount. And this is the moisturizer that I use twice a day. I use it in the morning and at night. The reason I like it in the morning is it's ultra rich and it's very hydrating, but it sets to a satin finish. So on my combination skin, I can't have any dewy moisturizers or dewy sunscreens, otherwise I turn into an oily mess. And this gives me the rich hydration that I need while still looking just like a natural soft satin finish on the skin. The texture is absolutely divine. It's like this whipped balmy butter. It's just so satisfying. But I also love wearing it at night alongside my Tretinoin or my Epiduo Forte because it's so incredibly soothing on my skin. Not as soothing as the Tatcha, but for a moisturizer, it's just very, very calming on my skin. It's also very simple. There's some hydrating ingredients, some occlusives and some ceramides, but that's pretty much it. And it has a delicious natural honey scent that I love. This alongside the Tatcha and my recently discontinued Tarte Baba Bomb Cream, they are the most repurchased skincare products in my collection. Before we get into the makeup, I have two sunscreens that I just really feel people should know about. The first is my most repurchased and the one that I wear under makeup. It's the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30. This is a mineral sunscreen. This has a thin, ultra spreadable, lightweight texture. The tint matches my skin perfectly. It's a mineral sunscreen, but it never makes my skin feel dry. And it sets down to the most undetectable soft matte finish on the skin. It truly is like the one product I feel is an effective makeup primer. It just smooths everything over and it truly is the most cosmetically elegant mineral sunscreen I have ever tried. I have gone through so many tubes of this, I can't count. And I do just wanna mention Paula's Choice sells little minis of this sunscreen on their website and I use those for travels. So if you wanna try before you buy, you could go to the Paula's Choice website. So many of you guys have told me you love this sunscreen and I'm glad you do. I think it is just the best of the best. But a close second and a sunscreen that just dropped today as I'm filming is the new In Beauty Project Mineral Sun Glow SPF 43 PA++++ 
with peptides and vitamin C. What's great about this is it's $35. It's a mineral sunscreen and it comes in two shades. Mine is fair medium. And then there's also a medium deep. I'll be honest with you. I did not have high hopes for this because it's called sun glow. And so I thought it was going to leave my skin looking super shiny or metallic or really wet looking. And that's not the experience I have with this whatsoever. It's even thinner and more lightweight than the Paula's Choice. It's another tint that's a perfect match for my skin. If you have fair skin with cool undertones like I have, it can oftentimes be a real struggle to find a good tinted sunscreen. They all tend to be too dark and too orange. This one has a little bit of pink in it, so it's just perfect for my skin. And aside from being so lightweight and invisible on the skin, both in the appearance and the texture, it feels so beautifully hydrating without being wet or greasy. It doesn't have a sunscreen feel. It just feels like a lightweight moisturizer. It's totally blown me out of the water. I was not expecting In Beauty to drop such a banger and I'm so excited that they did because I've already bought two bottles of this for my partner, John. He actually mixes both shades because he's a little bit darker than I have. And so he'll mix fair medium and fair deep to get his perfect tint. John said it works really well on his beard stubble. So if you have facial hair, it's a really good sunscreen for that. And I'm shocked by how soothing this was on my skin. It's extremely similar to the Live Tinted Hue Guard sunscreen but I like this one better. The lip tinted sometimes can feel dry on me after about three hours, but this one doesn't. And despite the fact that this has vitamin C, I actually find it to be super soothing on my skin. Normally my skin is very reactive to products with vitamin C and I've had no issues with this. In fact, I used the sunscreen on a day when my skin was really reactive and the new prequel sunscreen actually caused my skin to burn a little bit, but the In Beauty sunscreen didn't and that is saying a lot. Both the Paula's Choice and the In Beauty sunscreens are fragrance and essential oil free and I just cannot get enough of them. Them. All right, let's get into the makeup. My favorite foundation is Armani Luminous Silk in 4.75. For years, I avoided this because I knew it had a lot of fragrance and I just didn't want to irritate my skin. But somehow this is one of the only foundations I've tried that's pretty heavily fragranced and it just doesn't seem to bother my skin at all. It's a miracle. It is $69, so I recommend buying it when there's a sale or a discount. And I have yet to find a foundation that is similar to this. It is ultra lightweight and thin and spreadable and it just kind of sinks into the skin. It doesn't look dewy. It doesn't look matte. It just looks like skin and because it is so incredibly thin in texture It just really feels like you aren't even wearing makeup It has medium coverage, but it's totally buildable if you add a couple layers You can get full coverage You could mix it into moisturizer if you wanted to make a skin tint or a tinted moisturizer out of it You could add a glowy primer like the in beauty face glaze that I love But there are so many ways that you can customize a medium coverage or full coverage foundation with a natural finish And this one never emphasizes texture. It works fantastically on my acne prone skin. It never breaks up it never looks crusty by the end of the day. It is just my perfect formula. For bronzer, my most repurchased bronzer is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I use the shade Light Medium. It's $32. And what I love about this is it's sheer but buildable. I'm someone who tends to go a little bit overboard on the blush and bronzer. So I find that products that are a little sheer help with control. And it's funny, this feels like a really thin, almost watery kind of balm. And normally I hate balm textures on my skin because they can get sticky. They can be difficult to blend. They can look overly dewy on my skin. And I don't have that experience with this at all. It almost has a blurring quality to it. And though it applies kind of dewy at first, it sets in the skin a little bit. It works gorgeously with powder. And it's not a sticky balm formula. It's really thin. And like I said, it's almost a little bit watery when it first goes on. And so it blends super quickly. I truly haven't found another cream bronzer formula like it. I think I'm on my second or even third replacement of this. It's that good. Ah, I just looked up the description. It says it does have a little bit of sheer color coverage to even out the skin tone. That makes sense why it seems to perfect the skin. It truly is phenomenal. The only product that's a new release that made it to this video is the Milk Makeup Cooling Water Jelly Tints. Now these got a lot of hate online because influencers you know, were doing their influencer thing where they were creating viral content, pretending to like bite the jelly and some people were just striping it on their skin and then being shocked when it's stained. These are a blush stain. So you have to know that you gotta be careful with them. But if you have skin that just eats cream blush and you need something that's gonna last all day, look no further. Chill is my favorite shade. It's red. I'm wearing it on my cheeks and lips today and I'll show you the application clip. And it's very easy to see that if you just apply it with a brush and then wipe a little bit off on the back of your hand so that it's kind of evenly dispersed on the brush hairs, you get a beautifully even application. It doesn't go on patchy. It's super easy to use. It's extremely built. I find that it's easy to control if I just apply it on a brush first. Now you're not gonna get the cooling effect on your skin that way, but who really cares? I think that's just kind of the gimmicky aspect of it. What matters to me is that these colors are stunning. They work gorgeously on the lips. They last all day, and to me, they're easy to use. The only lip combination I've been wearing lately is the Milk Cooling Water Jelly Tint in Chill with a Victoria Beckham Lip Liner in 02 and a clear gloss on top. 
it just is, it's the perfect kind of popsicle vacation lip. It's perfect for sunny, warm weather. It makes me so happy. I love how long it lasts. And a lot of people have asked me how it feels on the lips. So this, because of the jelly texture, there is zero viscosity to this. So you're not gonna get any balm. You're not gonna get any shine. It literally feels like jelly in the stick. And when you apply it on your lips, it's just a water stain. So you would wanna add some kind of balm or gloss on top to make it comfortable. My other favorite shade is Splash and it's a berry. It looks almost identical to the shade Burst, but Burst is a little bit warmer of a pink and it's a little bit more pigmented. So I like the slight sheerness of Splash. All of the shades in this line just brighten up the skin. They look gorgeous as lip stains. And frankly, I just was not expecting to love these as much as I do. Like these are a holy grail product for me. And it's funny because so many people have been hating on them, but I truly think it's because people just aren't using them the right way. If you want to see all four shades in action applied on the cheeks and the lips, I'll leave a new makeup video in the description box where you can see a full review. If you've been here for a while, you know that I do not like cream blushes, but another favorite of mine is a cream blush. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wand in Pillow Talk. It's $42, so I do recommend buying it when there's a discount. It's quite pricey and it is so stunning. It's a liquid formula that comes with a sponge applicator and I find that the shade Pillow Talk is not only the perfect nude color for my skin, but also the perfect level of pigment for my skin. It's not too sheer, it's not too pigmented. Because of that, it's really easy to control and it's really easy to build up. It's the kind of color that goes with everything on my skin tone and it lasts really well on me, which is surprising because most cream and liquid formulas don't. But I do find that liquids fare better on me than creams and so that may be why there's a little bit more longevity, especially because it also sets down on the skin so it doesn't leave you with a really dewy, wet kind of finish. It's not matte, it's just another product that has that natural skin-like finish and that's what I always gravitate towards. Charlotte Tilbury tried to do me dirty though. In my nude blush deep dive where I tried 44 nude blushes, I talked about this product and I'll leave that video linked in the description box if you wanna watch it. It was so much fun to film. Charlotte Tilbury did me dirty and I emailed them and they said that they had discontinued the matte beauty blush wand in Pillow Talk. So my dumbass went out and bought two backups because I saw they were still available on Sephora. Turns out Charlotte Tilbury was just using a marketing ploy. They always have limited edition shades and then they create this scarcity mindset that you're gonna run out and you're never gonna be able to buy it again. And so then you buy backups and that's what I did and now I'm bitter about it and I'm never gonna buy backups of another limited edition Charlotte Tilbury product because they did that on purpose and I don't like that. Long-winded way of saying I love this product. It was limited edition. They took it off the Charlotte Tilbury website but it was available on Sephora the whole time and now it seems like it's permanent. And if you wanna see what all four shades of the Matte Beauty Blush Wands look like, I will leave a video in the description box below where I did a dedicated review of the product. The highlighter that I'm wearing on my skin today is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in 3. It's my most used and most repurchased highlighter and I definitely recommend getting it during a sale because it's Charlotte Tilbury. It's $49. Although if you're the shade 3, they actually make a mini size and that's the one that I prefer using. Charlotte Tilbury says that this is a complexion booster that blurs, smooths, and illuminates for a real life filter effect. But for me on my combination skin, I definitely would never use this all over the face like some people tend to do. I like using it as a highlighter and I I find that when applied on the high points of my face, it just looks like skin, but better. And skin that's expensive and well cared for. You can't see any visible glitter or shimmer particles in it, but there's enough shine that it still looks like a highlighter. It's also great because I can apply it over powder and it doesn't get all weird and patchy on my skin. It's a multifunctional product as well. I mean, you could mix it into foundation, moisturizer, whatever you want. I love applying it on my body. I'll mix it into body lotion. Right now I'm wearing it on my collarbones and it just adds a little bit of a glow to your body without looking like you're wearing something sparkly. It's just stunning and I'll love it forever. If you're more of a fan of a powder highlighter, I recommend the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Highlighting Blush. This is such an underrated product. It's $29 and I really haven't heard that many people talk about it. I think the marketing of this could throw people off. I know it threw me off. I was like a highlighting blush. I don't want shimmer all over my cheeks, especially because I'm acne prone. But the shade Opal Glow is perfect because it's basically my skin color. It's just kind of a champagne pink. And it reminds me a bit of the finish of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in that it's not super glittery or shimmery. It just looks natural while still looking like you're wearing a highlighter. So if you're the kind of person who wants your highlighter to look more like skin and not be that kind of, you know, 2015, you can see it from space kind of highlighter, I think this is a really great powder option. I know a lot of people love the Makeup Forever Wherever Pearl Highlighter, but that one was so chunky and terrible on me. I didn't get it. This is what I wanted Makeup Forever Wherever Pearl to be. For cream eyeshadow, my favorite is the Kulfi Zara Eyes Long Lasting Crease Proof Cream Eyeshadow. My two favorite shades are Bronze Brocade and Sitara Sparkles. These are $30 each and they have a really interesting formula. It's like a cross between the ColourPop like Jelly Mulch eyeshadows and the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. So it's like a cream mousse and a jelly in one.
one. It's so incredibly spreadable and blendable and you have so much time to blend these before they set down. And then once they set, they truly do not budge. They barely fade on me. They retain their shine throughout the day. I think that they are one of the most beginner friendly eyeshadows you could ever buy. There's a gorgeous amount of sparkle and shine in them, but there's also enough base pigment. So it's perfect for a one and done shadow. Truly, this is one of the most underrated makeup products. If you're someone like me who doesn't have the best eyeshadow skills and definitely is not great at blending, these are fantastic because they make wearing color really easy. Unfortunately, I just saw on the website that bronze brocade is not available at Sephora anymore. Only three shades are left. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know if Sephora is like phasing out Kulfi, but bronze brocade is still available on the Kulfi website and Satara Sparkles is available on Sephora. If you're looking for a liquid eyeshadow, my absolute favorite are the Armani Eye Tint Long Lasting Liquid Eyeshadows. I don't love the metallics as much just because I frankly haven't found a color that I really like, but the mattes are fantastic. My favorite shade is 22 and I'm wearing it today underneath Urban Decay Space Cowboy. They're $38 so it's a good time to pick them up during the sale. And this is truly the most beginner friendly liquid eyeshadow that I've ever tried because it's quite sheer and it's also quite thin and spreadable but you get a ton of time to work with them before they set down. And the sheerness of these is what makes them so beginner friendly but they're not sheer in a patchy way like a lot of liquid eyeshadows can be. The pigment is so incredibly smooth and even. 22 Cashew they describe as a warm tan matte. On me, it's only slightly warm. It looks a little bit cooler on me than it does in a lot of the pictures online, but it's my perfect everyday one and done eyeshadow. I can wear it during the daytime. I can amp it up at night. It's just perfect. And my favorite way to wear it is with Urban Decay Space Cowboy on top. So that's another one of my favorite products. Space Cowboy is just pure magic. I know that they've launched a lot of other moon dust eyeshadows, but none of them have recreated the texture and the shine that Space Cowboy has. I always wear Space Cowboy on top of a warm brown eyeshadow. It's my favorite look. I've been wearing that combination in basically all of my videos for the past two months. And Space Cowboy just has this unique texture of being a powder glitter pressed eyeshadow that is very, very thin. It has a sheer peach base. And so it adds a little bit of warmth to the eyes, but it's contrasted by silver glitter. And because the base is warm, but the glitter is cool, you just get this ultra shine that I find incredibly flattering. You can wear it over eyeshadow and it just transforms every single look. My last pick for eyeshadows are the Kaja Beauty Bento Bouncy Eyeshadow Trios. These are $26 and you get three shadows each. So that's basically like... $8.60 per shadow, which is insane considering that the formula of these feels so luxurious. The mattes are always incredibly smooth. They're creamy. They're never dry. They're never chalky or dusty. They're not too sheer. They're not too pigmented. So they're easy to control, but they're easy to build up. And then the shimmers are smooth. They're really reflective. There are also some shades that have this kind of chunky metallic glitter. I don't like those as much. My favorites are Chocolate Dahlia and Rose Water, which I'll show you today. Chocolate Dahlia is my perfect neutral palette. It's a neutral brown and it has champagne shimmer. So it just goes with absolutely everything. It's my go-to eyeshadow for when I want to wear a bold lip, especially a red. And I did just see that a bunch of the Kaja eyeshadow trios are no longer available on Sephora. So I don't know if they're phasing them out, but luckily my two favorites, Chocolate Dahlia and Rose Water are still there. Rose Water is an all shimmer trio. And I actually like layering all three on top at the same time for this ultra, ultra shiny finish. I love wearing Rose Water in the spring and summer or to concerts or music festivals. Some not only are you getting great value, you're getting amazing formulas, fantastic colors, and a product that's portable and really easy to use. Moving on to lips. Okay, we got the Charlotte Tilbury Hyaluronic Happy Kiss Lipstick Balm. A lot of Charlotte Tilbury here. They're $35 and I do just want to say heads up, the packaging feels a little on the dinky side. Like it's very, very thin, cheap feeling plastic, which I don't love, but the formula inside is a banger. This has hyaluronic acid, peptides, and rich emollient. It's basically giving you the hydration and the comfort of an occlusive bomb with the color payoff of a lipstick except for Crystal Happy Kiss, which is a sheer pink. The rest of them are super pigmented. These were one of my top picks in my glossy melty deep dive video where I compared a ton of similar products. So I'll leave that in the description box if you wanna know how they compare to other popular formulas. I love that these have a soft, subtle, kind of sweet vanilla scent. It's absolutely delicious. They have a gorgeous amount of shine. They have a little bit of a smoothing quality that just softens the appearance of lip lines. So they're very flattering. And best part of all for me is they're a little thick and they're a little sticky, but in like the 
best, most comforting way. They last really well on the lips because they have a little bit of that tack and they just feel ultra nourishing because they're just so occlusive and they're also very hydrating. I love them. I have gone through several, I don't even know at this point, I've gone through so many tubes of Crystal Happy Kiss and Pillow Talk and that says a lot because I have a makeup channel and I own a lot of lip products, but time and time again, I just keep repurchasing these because they're incredible. I'm just dying for Charlotte Tilbury to kind of hop on the trend of like the sheer popsicle look and release more sheer shades as well as release more neutral nudes for all skin tones because all of the colors in this line are, I don't know, they're just like a little too something. So I do want a shade expansion, but Pillow Talk and Crystal Happy Kiss have been favorites of mine forever. A kind of similar product is the Hourglass Phantom Volumizing Glossy Lip Balms. I know that these are super viral, so everybody knows about them. They're $36, so obviously it's a good time to get them when they're on sale. And they're described as an innovative all-in-one lip gloss balm that nourishes, hydrates, and visibly plumps lips while delivering full-bodied color with a dewy high shine finish. Now these do have a little bit of menthol in them for that cooling effect, but I find it to be quite subtle and non-irritating on me. Some products with menthol tend to really dry my lips out, but this one doesn't. And this is the kind of glossy lip balm that you want to reach for if you prefer a more lightweight, barely there formula. The Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss is for those of you who want a thicker, kind of more grippy formula. The Hourglass is very lightweight. It's super, super shiny and wet looking. There's a bit of slip to them, so they feel very buttery and lightweight, but they're not so slippery that they get all messy and slide around my lip lines. I find that with a lot of like lip oil formulas or very thin lip balms, oftentimes the pigment can be kind of uneven, but these are super smooth. They feel really hydrating and they do kind of look like your lips are more full when you're wearing them because of the glossy effect that they provide. I actually own a ton of these, but my top four favorites are Slip, Crave, Reveal, and Desire. Unsurprisingly, all of the pinks. Beyond the cooling effect, I don't notice any kind of fragrance with these. And if you want to see a longer review and a comparison to other glossy melty lip balms, I'll leave that video in the description box. I know perfumes are very personal, but I just wanted to share my two favorites from Sephora. Commodity Gold Personal is my everyday signature scent. I get so many compliments on it and it's great because it's so simple and it's more of like a, a close to the skin scent. A full size bottle is 145 or you can get a travel size for 28. So the way Commodity works is there are three different levels to their fragrances. First, there's a personal and that just kind of has a few little base notes. Then you have expressive and that builds off of the notes of personal and then you have bold and that has the most notes. Commodity Gold Personal is very simple. It just has ISOE Super, Sandalwood, and Vanilla. ISOE Super is a molecule that smells a little bit woody but it kind of changes with your body chemistry. I'm actually nose blind to ISOE Super. I can't smell it. It smells like water to me. So all I smell in this is Sandalwood and Vanilla and that is all I need because it smells fantastic. It's not a sweet saccharin artificial kind of vanilla. It's just a very creamy vanilla. There's almost a little bit of a musky quality to this as well. And I do smell a little bit of woody notes. So it's the kind of vanilla perfume where you would wear it if you want something that is vanilla forward, but isn't just gourmand. And it's a unisex fragrance. Like I said, it's not overly sweet, so anybody can wear it, but you do just have to, you know, be down for the presence of vanilla. And if you missed it, I featured this as the best everyday scent in my vanilla perfume video. I tried 59 vanilla perfumes. The video is an hour and 20 minutes. I basically wanted to just create an encyclopedia of vanilla perfumes for you so you could have the best information to make an informed buying decision. So if you want to know all of my favorite and least favorite vanilla perfumes, I'll leave that video in the description box as well. But for a light, creamy, unisex vanilla perfume, Commodity Gold Personal is phenomenal. As the weather gets warmer, I start wearing my other signature everyday scent, which is Ellis Brooklyn Sunfruit. God, I love this so much. It's a fruity floral, and usually I hate fruity florals, but this is the one fruity floral that just makes my heart sing. The description says, inspired by tan lines, ripe fruit, and bare skin, this fragrance is a creamy and unapologetic blend of fresh fig, bergamot, hand-picked jasmine, cyclamen, coconut, and vanilla. Addictive and aspirational, it's the kind of scent that inspires vacation daydreams. You get the fig, and you get the creamy coconut, and then you get this background of just beautiful soft florals, and then you get these juicy ripe fruits. Oh my god, I literally like crave wearing this. And my mouth somehow starts watering when I smell it. There's almost a little bit of, I don't want to like freak people out, but there's almost like a sour quality. That's not going to sit right. No, here's what it is. It's a tartness. There's a tartness to the fruit that I really appreciate. It's not like overly sweet fruit. It's tart fruit. 
Mm, it's making my mouth water. It's that good. And I just noticed on Sephora, there are actually four sizes now, which I think must be new. The biggest size is 3.4 ounces for 155 or 1.7 ounces for 110, 0.3 ounces for $33 for a quarter of an ounce for $25. So great option to get a mini size before you buy or Ellis Brooklyn makes a ton of sets so you can try a bunch of their fragrances as well. And I know Sephora carries some of them. My favorite hair product that I always purchase during the Sephora sale is the Oribe Dry Texturizing Spray. And I got a brand new bottle. I don't buy backups anymore, but I do buy backups of this because I run out so quickly. I could use this right now. So I'm gonna show you a demo on both sides of my hair. So you can see my hair is quite thin and silky. I have hairspray in and it's still just pretty limp and there's not much texture. This is the best texturizing spray that I found and it's $52, so I like to buy it during the sale. But you can get a mini size for 26 and I just... I mean, hello, the difference is very clear. So it gives you this texture and a little bit of hold. It's not a hairspray, but you do have a little bit of that soft hold. And it just gives you texture in your hair without being gritty, without feeling heavy or dirty, even on my very, very fine, thin hair. It doesn't weigh it down, as you can see, and it smells amazing, and it's not too overly fragranced. I have tried like 20 texturizing sprays, Nothing comes close to this, nothing. I mean, it gives you a lot of texture, it's great. And my last favorite is the Moroccan Oil Dry Shampoo for dark tones. I don't really notice that much of a difference between light tones and dark tones, so don't stress about it. This is my favorite aerosol dry shampoo because it doesn't leave a strong white cast in my hair. It smells amazing. I love the way Oribe and Moroccan Oil smells, and I'm just gonna demo for you really quickly, although I actually do already have some of this in my hair today. So I'm gonna let that sit for a bit. My biggest hack I can give you is if you spray dry shampoo on dry, clean hair, like after you've showered, dry shampoo is best used as a preventative measure. So I will spray it in my hair and then I'll sleep in it. I won't even like brush it out. And the next day I'll brush it out and my hair is clean and fresh. But you can see it blends into my hair really well. It provides a little bit of texture, but it doesn't make the hair feel gritty or like even dirtier than before, like so many dry shampoos can. See how it mattifies the hair, but it doesn't have a strong white cap and it doesn't make it look really like gritty or heavy or weighed down. Abby Young taught me an incredible hack, which is if you notice your dry shampoo leaving a white cast in your hair, use a hair dryer and somehow the heat from the hair dryer makes the white cast go away. It was like, when she said that, it totally blew my mind and trust me, it works. Those are my top 20 recommendations from Sephora. If I were gonna sneak in a couple more recommendations, I'd say the In Beauty Lip Glazes, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Hydro Glow Foundation, which I'm wearing today, and the Shiseido Eyelash Curler. But I wanted to keep it to my top 20 best products from Sephora that I have repurchased so many times and will continue to recommend for years to come. I'll leave a video on the screen for you to keep watching. Stay tuned. My next video is going to be a Shop the Sephora sale video with me where I'm gonna add a ton of different products to my cart and give myself a budget and I'm slowly gonna have to talk myself out of buying all the things that I want. Let us know in the comments what your favorite products are from Sephora and wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.